If you ask any professional investor what they're looking at right now, they're going to say yields and why shouldn't they? It tends to move in times like these. But what they really should be looking at is gold because it tends to move before things get bad. So today we're going to have a deep dive into gold and the macro drivers behind the shiny metal hitting all time highs. We're also going to be talking about Bill Ackman. He's made some very sneaky moves under the hood and I think it's a good gauge as to where we're going to go in 2024. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Daily Recap Show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's get into it. Truthfully, another very weird day in the market. One of those rotation days. Technology and communication services were really sold off, particularly semiconductors as well as software. There were some good sectors, financials, home improvement, healthcare. Here are the US sectors on the day. Look at the best performing sectors. Uh, regional banks, insurance, real estate, healthcare, staples, utilities, all outperforming the SPY with the laggage tech, uh, software, semiconductors. If we actually look at the five-day chart, again, regional banks, the best performing sectors, real estate, gold, software, financials, staples, utilities, all outperforming the SPY as well. And same thing, semiconductors, communications, technology, the underperformers. Now, there's a lot of moving parts to all of this, and I'm going to break it down for you in the macro fundamental and technical and it all starts with sentiment people are bullish very very bullish and they were coming off a very bullish run in the last four weeks and not a lot of people were bearish it just goes to show uh, where the sentiment is right now and looking at dumb money as well now this is the dumb money confidence when it crosses the 80 percent line and the s p 500 is above the 200 daily moving average we can see that there's a bit of optimism here this is excessive optimism we are seeing excessive amounts of optimism and while in the short term, it's not really a good thing, in the longer term, uh, the results are actually quite positive. You know, looking at the, uh, the the longer term results one year later, you do see median returns of very close to 12%, 84% of the time. So a very, very interesting stat right there. But in, in the year now, retail as a whole, very, very bulled up. And I think that's because a lot of them caught a lot of the run in early November. A lot of the shift and optimism had to do with rates because they've come down aggressively. But today we did see quite the bit up. I mean, look at the, the US 2 here up nearly 10 basis points. That's a very big move for yields. The 10 year, you know, going from 4.2 to, to 4.27, nearly at 4.3. Guys, that's a very, very big move, you know. You know, yields moving up 1.74%. But that's essentially what happened and we saw bonds prices bid down. But today we did see quite the bid up. I mean, look at the, the US 2 here, up nearly 10 basis points. That's a very big move for yields. The 10 year, you know, going from 4.2 to, to 4.27, nearly at 4.3. Guys, that's a very, very big move, you know. You know, yields moving up 1.74%. But that's essentially what happened and we saw bonds prices bid down. But today we did see quite the bid up. I mean, look at the, the US 2 year, up nearly 10 basis points. That's a very big move for yields. The 10 year, you know, going from 4.2 to, to 4.27, nearly at 4.3. Guys, that's a very, very big move, you know. You know, yields moving up 1.74%. But that's essentially what happened and we saw bonds prices bid down. But today we did see quite the bid up. I mean, look at the, the US 2 year, up nearly 10 basis points. That's a very big move for yields. The 10 year, you know, going from 4.2 to, to 4.27, nearly at 4.3. Guys, that's a very, very big move, you know. You know, yields moving up 1.74%. But that's essentially what happened and we saw bonds prices bid down. And we are expecting five rate cuts to come before January 2025. And literally three weeks ago, it was just two. So financial conditions have eased significantly and some are saying far too quickly. And this could be a very big problem because we've had this huge uh, push in the financial conditions index um, and financial conditions are easing substantially. I mean, we saw home loans go from, I, I saw something like 8.1% down to home loans getting to, you know, the 7% uh, flat rate, which 
which is quite substantial, really, really good for homeowners to not have to pay those rates when they lock them in. What this means is as inflation has come down, financial index has eased. If we ease too quickly, like we have been seeing, inflation could flare up and that could be very, very bad, meaning the Fed may need to cut again. And I think that's why rates were bid up. There's this balance that the market is trying to hold at the moment. Investors are trying to find a balance between inflation and yields because the last thing the market wants is a rate hike because let's be honest, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, these are priced to perfection right now. They're actually priced for rate cuts in 2024. And if we don't get those cuts, there's going to be some vicious sell side that's going to occur. Let's uh, switch gears a bit and talk about gold. It hit new all-time highs just below 2120. And then in as quickly as it went up, it came right down. I think a lot of people, a lot of retailers uh, were chasing this, had stops right here, right here. And the second we got below this, it was a trigger hunt, as well as just a bit of macro uh, news that was driving this, this trade. And it had to do a lot with what's happening in the Middle East, the truce that was supposed to to happen faulted. There were some missile strikes. The U.S. gave Israel a warning to limit civilian deaths, and we saw and we saw gold bid down, silver bid down in early trade. And you know, price action like this, it's not normally good for gold long term. And we can see here, uh, this is gold after two percent intraday rally or greater to a 52-week high, and then it actually closes below um, the opening price. And we have nine instances of this happening. Not sure if this is statistically significant, but you can see median returns 12 months later of four a percent 60 percent of the time and the risk to reward isn't really there you're looking at an average max loss of 10 percent and an average max gain of 9.2 percent so you know it just goes to show that maybe this gold trade maybe this price action isn't really something that you should be taking right now and maybe look for a deeper pullback into the 2000 territory maybe even into the 1900 territory but i am bullish on gold into next year i do have a price target of 2200 i've been saying that for the better part of a month now i've actually been saying that when gold was at 1860 it's really good to see gold get up to that 2160 level. Just be aware of the stats here, guys. You know, sometimes this type of trade based on macro news and what's and geopolitical news can affect the commodity trade quite significantly. Enough about commodities. Let's talk about equities. And we have earning Dollar General reporting Thursday, as well as a couple of big names, Broadcom, Lululemon, DocuSign. You know, we do have GameStop. Some of these meme names, uh, Campbell Soup reporting on Wednesday before the open, Neo as well, not too big a week in earnings, probably something I won't cover. I might look at Broadcom. Now, earnings this quarter have come in very, very good, according to Yardeni Research. We're seeing earnings growth of about 4.1%, and we are expecting growth to continue. Yardeni forecasts 2023 earnings at 225. I forecast 221 for this coming quarter. We'll see who's right. 2024 earnings they forecast at 250. I forecast at 240. Again, we'll see who's right. And then 2025 earnings, they forecast at 270. They're kind of in line at the moment. We might report there. And it's going to be really, really good for the S&P 500 if we can go ahead and hit these targets of 225, 250, and 270. And if that's the case, and we do return to year-over-year -year growth for the S&P 500, it's going to look very, very attractive for PEs, particularly after 2024, 2025. Right now, the forward PE is sitting at 18 seven for the S&P 500 right here at the October lows we were sitting at about 17.1 when I told you guys to sell your children and buy the dip just kidding this is looking a bit pricey now historically compared to 2000 to 2020 2022 it's not looking too bad if you are looking at the very long term it doesn't really matter just dollar cost average and avoid the noise like data we have quite a lot of noise this week pmi services data ism manufacturing jolts report non-farm payrolls we have the unemployment rate hourly wages initial jobless claims a very big week of data and a lot of this data what people are going to be looking at is deflation because we are seeing that right now. Have a look at this. This is the Fed's inflation now cost, negative 0.01. And according to David Rosenberg, the Atlanta Fed now cost for Q4 GDP growth went from 2.1% on November the 22nd to 1.2% today. Really crazy that GDP is falling quite significantly for the quarter. And I really want to see where this ends up and when we get the next GDP print. Now, let's say the Fed hypothetically does overcook everything and we get a massive amount of deflation across prices, services, goods, and then they start cutting rates. Where do we want to be positioned when there's deflation and rate cuts? The best place to be in time 
times of deflation is US equities and US treasuries. If you actually have a look at it as a whole, deflation across the board is just terrible for all risk assets, commodities, etc. Same with stagflation. And that's why if we do get any form of deflation, deflation is just de-accelerating growth, high inflation. If we do get that, expect the Fed to cut significantly. And if the Fed do cuts, where do we want to be positioned? Well, we want to be in US treasuries, equities, as well as REITs. This is where we want to be. And this is what Bill Ackman is betting on. We got some data here that Bill Ackman, Pershing Square, his hedge fund, has purchased $1.3 billion worth of how we use stock. And it's really interesting. I think what Bill is betting on is that data is going to come in really weak. Rates are going to be cut a lot. There's going to be deflation and real estate is a great hedge against deflation. And when rate cuts happen, REITs boom. As you can see right here, in every instance, when rates came down quite significantly, uh, REITs absolutely rocketed in every instance look at 2020 same thing right here REITs rocketed uh, when rates were pretty much flat and the same thing here in 08 even after we had a global housing crisis REITs rocketed after rates were cut and they do go on quite the extended rally when rates do get cut significantly and this is why hedge funds as a whole are probably increasing their exposure they're seeing rate cuts and deflation and probably buying and positioning themselves appropriately now let's talk about the VIX. VIX is currently sitting at 13, pretty low. And we've seen a lot of this price action where it's bit up in the morning and then it sort of just makes its way down. Bit of vol compression. Sometimes it even goes below the actual open. But today up three and a half percent, down four percent from the highs. Crazy stuff. But low volatility is a feature, not a bug of bull runs. In these extended bull periods, we do have low volatility and it's actually what you want to see in bull runs. So don't mistake low volatility as a bad thing it's just a feature of bull runs and normally what we see if history is to repeat we're just going to continue seeing these low volatility spikes happen and volatility to constantly spike come down spike come down here are the stats on a low vix this is the forward performance for the vix 12 months as well as six months and you can see that when the vix is in this location right here anywhere between you know 12 and 13 you could really expect an average return of 10.3 median return of about 9.6 and that occurs 88 percent of the time so a low vix is actually kind of bullish in the long run you can see maximum returns of 36.2 minimum 14.1 percent that's actually the average s p 500 drawdown very interesting to see dynamics in the VIX. I know a lot of people saying a low VIX means we must, the indexes must fall, not necessarily the case, especially when you do have a significantly long time period above six months. And that's generally what I invest for. I buy strategic pullbacks, looking for longer term plays and to make outsized gains in comparison to the S&P 500. Now let's talk about seasonality. We are expecting a very positive December, at least for the second half. The first half is going to be uh, quite bumpy. And then we are expecting some form of a Santa rally after the 16th. And here's the gamma for today. I managed to get a heat map and there's a huge amount of negative gamma right here at the 630, 6, just above the 620 level. This is the core gamma resistance right now. And I do think that what market makers want is probably to get up to here so they could hedge this negative gamma and as it stands right now we are sitting right here so do expect probably a run up in the next few days to about 4600 especially in the bigger names if we do get past here if we do get above here we go up to the uh, 4630 level so that the market makers can hedge this before max pain on the 15th of december now let's hop on the chart and this is the year-to-date chart of the spx this was the candle that we got today it was a green candle but we did gap down quite significantly what we see with candles like this is that it's a very green short wick with a short top and a long tail and essentially what that means is that bulls came in and bought this after we were sold off significantly and we closed at the highs or very close to the highs of the day although still much lower than the close on friday this 4630 level is where that huge amount of negative gamma sits and this 4600 is the core gamma resistance if we do get above here expect a sharp rally to above the 4630 level but it's going to be really really hard for the markets to do anything significant above the 
uh, 4600 level. So very, very key. What do I expect for the rest of the week? Again, just chop in this area until we break above here and then go higher into this 4630 level. That's what I'm expecting. So what am I expecting for the week? Just a bit of chop until we go ahead and break this area. And I do think we'll probably just chop in this area for the rest of the week if we do go ahead and break the 4600 level. And as long as we're above 4490, 4500 level, I'm still bullish that all dips will get bought. We actually saw that today. Bears tried to take us lower, but bulls came in bought the dip, closed on a green day, closed at the highs of the day. Now, looking at some dark pulls in the Ultra Pro QQQ, you saw why the lows of the day were bought. The 20th biggest trade since inception came in right here, and then we rallied definitely a buy. Very interesting to see that. And the same thing on semiconductors, 13th biggest trade since inception, bought, and then we rallied up. So these are definite buys and areas of interest to keep your eye on this week, the 2140 level for the um, semiconductor 3X bull. Now, thank you guys. If you liked this video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, like this video, leave a comment. You know, I love you guys.